All right, boom. This is another uh, installation of uh, TTM chat, and we got uh, John Swan house. John Swan. And I saw him uh, scratching at table turns. I was like, yo, I gotta have him through. He's a really sick DJ. Cause a lot of DJs, uh, you know, there's not a lot of DJs at the level of, you know, just multiple different types of orbits and, and, and different things like that. People being able to uh, c control a lot of patterns and cross rhythms too. I feel like I've seen you drop some cross rhythms. Yeah. Is there anything you wanna drop about that? Like as far as like the DJs that you were looking up to that, that you know, um, inspired you? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, when I was, uh, I always liked, like, I come from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Midwest. There's oh, that's crazy. Place. I was born in Milwaukee. You are born in Milwaukee? Yeah, I was born at uh, St. Mary's Hospital. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born at St. Mary's Hospital. And, uh, yeah, I lived there until I was, like, maybe a couple months old. And then uh, I, my parents moved out here in New York. And I lived in New York until I was three. And then I moved back to Milwaukee when I was three. I lived in Milwaukee until I was about seven. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Columbia as a okay. uh, yeah, down on the east side. Yeah, my, my grandparents' house is in uh, uh, Glendale. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Glendale's uh, up in the, the north side, in front of the park. Yeah, that's crazy. That's funny. There it is. Can I, now we know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, there's this guy. Uh -huh. I was I was like fast scratchers. Like I mean, I didn't really like who uh, disc. I like oh, this. Yeah, yeah. I like funny. we were just talking about him last episode. We had Kid Ginseng come uh -huh. over here. Yeah, I feel like people don't talk about that much, but it's like, I like, I mean, of course, I like Cuba and all the like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like disc a um, lot. Um, Ram, Mike Realm, I think, when yeah, I yeah, think was, really was really 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 but it's, I also, I was also, though, I didn't really do the video stuff, too. Though. Yeah, he's like, doing the video the, stuff the, now. The mashups, I'll put a link, mashups to all his Yeah, stuff. he's always got the like, suit on. Hollywood like, stuff, he's doing some really cool uh, remixes. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. trailer remixes, re remixes. Yeah, trailers. like live remixes and yeah. stuff like that. So, stuff like that, and... I always like, and I also didn't, uh, I mean, I scratched hamster, so it's uh -huh. yeah. it just hard trying to like figure out, it's hard to watch some DJs who didn't scratch hamster, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. things. but like for a while I wasn't even, I didn't really care about like names uh -huh. of scratches yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, but uh -huh. I feel like just cause it got a little bit much. Yeah. But, and when did you start? When, when, when did you start teaching? Uh, 1999, okay, then I got then. into DJing. Uh -huh, yeah. It's funny because I actually I know specifically how I got into DJing because mm -hmm. I was originally I didn't even like like I didn't like well I did not like hip hop I just mm -hmm. didn't I liked uh, I was playing like Wipeout X I got into like electronic music first uh -huh. I was playing like Wipeout XL uh -huh. uh, which is like a video game that had like Future Sound of London and like uh -huh. and like all like Kim was all these like uh -huh. electronic music so then I started like an electronic music. cool so you came in through. Uh uh, turntables and stuff scratching through the the, the, the the like electronic yeah so like it's like so it was breaks like what kind of electronic stuff were you listening to? no it was, it was just, it's just like there's all this weird, like yeah like some breaks stuff uh -huh. some drum and bass and some like faux tech just like like uh -huh. like video games and then like MTV amp used to have like mm -hmm. a compilation that had like a uh, goldie on it and then I started getting drum and bass and then yeah, after goldie, drum yeah. and bass I started to hear scratching a little uh -huh. bit more because that's what uh -huh, I see. and then I ended up going to like I think it's like Hello Nasty tour uh -huh. Like uh, see like Beast Boys and Tribe of Love movement Tribe oh, of Love concert saw Mix Master Mike yeah in Milwaukee and I saw Mixmaster, exactly I saw uh, Mix Master yeah. Mike and I was like yeah. oh bet I scratch and I guess yeah. what, like that's the part of uh -huh. DJing that I like now so yeah so yeah then that was like 1998 then I didn't get like yeah you know like everyone does you're scratching your parents shit yeah then like I sold my drum set in like 2000 I think oh, okay. I played drums for four years to get like a Scratch Master Pro so how long were you drumming before that uh four years just like throughout okay. like middle school uh -huh. and like, shit like and like that like my family my sister is a professional guitarist my dad played bass guitar but uh -huh. my mom just sticks to music so like, uh -huh. I just play drums but then I sold my drum set like my Pearl drum set and got like a Scratch Master uh -huh. so, DJ so do you produce you I do a little uh -huh. bit uh, I do like. Uh, do you still drum or do you I, still? I, I don't drum. Any other instruments? Or, no, no, just not straight that much. Yeah, just straight scratching. Like, like, like I have, I have synthesizers and like drum machines and stuff. And me and my friend uh, share a studio, and he does more production stuff. Sick. And then like sick. I play with a like, dude's band sometimes. Uh, it's called Minus Pedro, and they I do like layer, I layer some stuff on that. But mainly uh, just scratching. Dope, dope. And then do you do uh, um, do you do juggling or are you just scratching? A do lot, of, a lot of juggling. Like, a lot of juggling, because yeah, a lot of. You know, a lot of people that are jugglers don't really scratch a lot, but I noticed that you can scratch, you know, because a lot of jugglers can't scratch that well. Yeah. You know, and a lot of scratchers can't juggle that well. It's like it, things are kind of shifting into, it, like, because in the, back in the day, everybody was doing this all the same, you know, juggling and scratching yeah. and together. I feel like now things are kind of splitting apart. It's, it's cool because, like, I actually, I, I could, it's funny because, like, I feel like I could, 
I, I battled for a long time, and I uh-huh. still battle now, and then I did, I did pretty well in battles. Uh-huh. But, like, I feel like yeah, I... Battles. Battles. Uh, okay, well, all right, I'm going to list. Yeah, yeah, the- John Swan, uh-huh. those of you who yeah. don't know, uh, so I won DMC Chicago when, when I was 19. And Sick, what year is it? 2004. Oh, 2004. So, yeah, so I went to the U.S. Finals in 2004. Mm-hmm. I also won Vinyl Combat, which is, like, this Reigns, uh, with the first, uh, first... It was a Reign and Serato battle mm-hmm. there in 2004, too. And I went to the U.S. Finals for that. I, lo- I lost both. I lost it to mm. uh, Tracks in the finals. Oh, okay. uh, final counter, which is like a head-to-head battle. Because yeah. he was doing... And actually, I won Serato yeah. when I was 19. And I actually sold it for like $200 <laughs> before it was released. Because I was like 19. I was like, yeah. I need $200. I don't have a laptop. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. Final Scratch. That shit didn't really pop off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I bought the original Final Scratch. And then it like, didn't work. And the update. I was like, like, this ain't going to be shit. <laughs> it came out like a couple months later like for like $600. I was like, yeah. shit. I actually sold it to this cat nuisance in in uh, uh-huh. Madison. He's actually uh, some people who like who are on Pal Talk or uh-huh. Pal Talk back there or like in the scratch team. Like they might know of him, but mm-hmm. he's a really dope scratcher. Shout out to nuisance Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, but like yeah, so that won those, and then uh, fucking then I didn't battle for a while because they stopped having battles in sh- in like oh the DMT DMT in Chicago oh, for like okay. a long time. So it and, went to like the closest city or something. Yeah, so like the clo- I couldn't get to the closest oh, city anymore. Okay. So then I just kind of hung around in Milwaukee yeah. for like some years and moved to New York in 2008 oh, okay. and then I ended up getting, losing more battles uh, oh. but I got to technical difficulties I lost the, uh, in the finals as US So how many, times, how many times did you compete in, uh, here in New York? Uh, like, oh, I don't know, like 2008, 2009, 2010, didn't do an 11, I think I did 12. That's dope, so you've been in a lot of DMCs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, got, I lost to SBS in the Supremacy Final in uh-huh. 2008, and didn't get to go to London, and then uh, actually in the Gong Battle Final, mm-hmm. which is dope, it's uh, Rest in Peace Rock Raider, like, yeah. you saw me in the Supremacy Battle, dope. and then invited me to do the Gong Battle yeah. uh, that same year. Sick, sick. That was actually cool, too, because, like, I got jaded and on where that. Where was that? What was the Gong Battle? I don't know about the battle. Uh, it's a battle that executioners used to throw, oh, where it's that, like, yeah. if you suck, they gong you. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, like, you know, like the gong show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like they literally have a gong. Where was it? Is that SOBs? Uh, SOBs, wow. I think, wow, uh, so I think they had some at, like, Hero Ballroom once before. Oh. Yeah, so anyway, but, like, I feel like I got through a lot of my battling, like, like where it's, like, I I beat certain people that some people didn't expect me to beat, because mm-hmm. either, like, yeah, yeah. like you're saying about juggling, like, um, I could scratch better than some of the jugglers could yeah. juggle, but yeah. then some of the people who were scratching, like, I could juggle better than they could. Yeah. Scratch exactly. It's yeah. like I think, yeah. I mean, I ended up beating like this dude Kiko before, and uh-huh. like Virus and a bunch of other cats. But I think it's just because I had a balance. I always because yeah. like, I, I don't think I was particularly strong at mm-hmm. either or, uh-huh. but I was better at one mm-hmm. than the other person is at the other. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm saying the round. Yeah, yeah, for that particular round. Yeah, yeah so that's dope. Yeah. And then what about drumming and stuff like that, like? You ever scratch other cats, like bands or anything like that? Um, there's, there's or not, there's, you ever, you ever collaborated on it? I've collaborated a little bit uh-huh. with uh, just like friends who were musicians and stuff. And yeah. then there's, there's actually a guy who I, I haven't got enough time to work with in the studio yet. Yeah. This is Cat Andy Bauer, who is the drummer uh-huh. for Twin Shadow. Uh-huh. We've just been going back and forth talking about uh-huh. collaborating more because he has, has a, definitely a more successful drummer than I am a DJ, but he's mm-hmm. played with more DJs than I have drummers and he's just... You know, he sees the potential yeah. and opportunity for yeah. to make some some dope music and stuff. So yeah, you know what's interesting is that with juggling, I noticed that a lot of times people are always usually taking hip hop patterns and breaking them down into you know various patterns that you can make from those patterns. But you know, it'd be interesting to see like I was just thinking about the Chicago juke stuff. You never see people really like juggle with like, yeah juke or some just different styles of drums because then the drums are going to be in different places in the pattern. It's hard to hear. Hard the patterns to will sound different, you know, if, especially if it's a lot of claps and it's like, yeah. you know, a lot of the juke stuff, I know out of the, the, the shy town area, it's like a lot of the claps and stuff in it. Yeah, 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 that'd be cool. I know, like, uh, I remember there's a couple guys like, when B-more was like pretty popular. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, right. oh, like, yeah. like, like, shit like that, but... But for oh, me, yeah. I think personally, I think the future of juggling is going to be just kind of like how, uh, uh, what's his name, Reyna this year? Yeah. Uh, where it's like metal, like guitars or, you know, like Rock the Bells type of things because you can just, every time you're cutting, you can hear everything, whereas like a lot of stuff, if you, if there's a lot of space between the kicks and snares, yeah. you, know, you could be going off and doing all types of crazy stuff and you're 
missing clicks that are only falling between the kicks and the snares or like the empty spaces. Yeah. Whereas if you have that space full of a noise, of a, whether it's a tone or a melody, or something, yeah, something you like can that. hear what's happening throughout the whole thing. So it seems like it's like you're like random stuff when it's like da, 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 and you know like even just like bad meaning bad, um, all that type of stuff. When there's like those those old uh, rock guitars and just big hits and, and being able yeah, to have more samples, different to, pitch, yeah, them being at a different like frequency or pitch, so you can like, it's like you almost have a cons. Some, you have all this stuff going on with the drums, but then like this consistent thing in the background that's like, oh, this is... Yeah, and not even bad meaning bad. Really, I mean uh, uh, the, the, the LL Cool J one, the, um, Rock the Bells. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wait, I mean, like, I like, you know, I like, yeah, I mean... What's the one with the guitar, the, the LL Cool J one, where it's like... Going uh, back to Cali? No, the one dun, with the, the, the drum one, and it's like... And, uh... Like not bad, meaning bad. Uh, bad. Is that LL Cool J or is that Run DMC? No, not Peter Pass. Yeah, yeah, that's Peter. That's Run DMC. But the what's that LL Cool thing that that Jazzy Jeff always cares? That is Rock the Bells, isn't it? I forget. Yeah, maybe it's yeah. Let's rock the Bells. Yeah, LL Cool J. Yeah, yeah, like that. That's what I'm saying. I think the future is more like that, where because that you can scratch everything. You can hear if somebody's doing something crazy. Yeah, and the newer styles will have to be stuff that's even more intricate. And like, oh, they're doing a triple 3D, and they're like crapping yeah, it, and yeah. they're doing this, uh, you know, at the same time. And you can only hear all that crazy stuff if somebody, if the, if it's like that that LL song where you know it's just like guitars in it. Because I noticed that in Reina said this year when he won, it was, uh, he was dealing with a lot of like guitar hits. And yeah, stuff. I mean, I, I yeah, yeah, I definitely am a big fan of guitar hits and things like juggling records that are not necess- that are not rap records. Yeah, right. All like, yeah, it's. You know? Like, see, I feel like a lot of the judges are. Cause I, I competed twice in uh, in DMC and, and lost both times. Uh, and the first time, I didn't even they didn't, I didn't even place into the mm-hmm. get into the, the round, you know. And what was interesting is that it was I think it was like Neil Armstrong and or Daddy Dog, some of the fiddle mm-hmm. tune at the time they were judging, and he wasn't even paying attention. He was even like he left the room. Like two of them were supposed to be judging the people in the pre yeah. battle. They didn't even you know and. Uh, I was gonna bring this up too. I, I, it does seem that uh, people feel that a turntablist these days is supposed to have a certain look. And what I notice is that I, I deal with a lot of a lot of videos. Uh-huh. Um, I, I I run a, a, a network called Turntablism Broadcasting Network. Mm-hmm. I post a lot of videos, and I notice that people aren't forwarding video unless it's like old school '90s stuff. People aren't forwarding stuff by black turntablists. That was I notice that the kids aren't forwarding it. Yeah, like, you know, won't even click on it. So yeah. and I experiment, you know, it's like like so if I, you know, if it's a video where it's me, one of my homies is Caucasian, and and I, I'll like okay, let me put him in the thumbnail instead of me. Oh shit! And mm-hmm. uh, there's algorithms I can tell if your hand's black or if it's not. Yeah. Uh, with, you know, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, they have a lot of different algorithms, and and uh, I've noticed that within the turntables and algorithms, plus people's own bias, there's a lot, you know, there's a, um, you know, like you don't see, like what's his name, uh, Jay, that just won the. DMC. Uh, Eric J. Eric J. Like, you don't see people posting his stuff. No, like, no, yeah. Or right? oh, amazing oh, stuff. And I haven't, ever since he won, I haven't seen one person ever post a video of his. Like, i never seen, like, hey, look, it's Eric J. You know, he did this thing. Yeah, or it's... Or whatever, some online thing or whatever. You know, you never see, you know, people posting his stuff. Whereas, like, all these other... I'll see people be like, oh, there's a thousand likes to a cat. You know, I'm like, wow, that's dope. But, you know, it's just interesting. Yeah, there's, like, there's a, there's a whole bunch... It's funny. Yeah, there's a... Like, even when I won those battles in 2004, like, me, uh, some of the other, like, uh, black turns that were, like, yeah. some battle users were, like, some of them were, like, oh, man, I can't, I, they were mad that, like, I beat them in this battle room, uh, but then I, they're thinking, like, oh, well, I'm just glad to see a black dude exactly. uh, winning yeah, this battle. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And I'm, I'm excited, when I saw you at the table turn, I was like, wow, I'll just see another brother uh, scratching at a high level, because a lot of times, you know, there's, there's different... Uh, within the the juggling movement and the scratching movement, mm-hmm. there's a lot more Black Americans that are in the juggling movement than in the scratching movement. The yeah. scratching movement, we're a very very small minority, you know. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. You remember when they had that 50 turntablist thing when they invited 50? Yeah, turntables I didn't watch the whole thing. The right, thing. Yeah. All right, there was there was like three Black turntablists out of 50 turntablists. Like, hey, we invented yeah, you know turntablists. Yeah. Like, that's like having a like like an Indian thing and only inviting three Indian people out of 50. If it's yeah. some traditional Indian uh, like music or something like tabla, like we're gonna have a tabla festival, and we're only gonna invite three Indian people to a tabla festival yeah. or something like that. It's like that wouldn't make sense, you know? Yeah, it's. And I think it was Craze. 
maybe Jazzy Jeff they invited, and maybe Cash Money. I know it was only like three. I know. Yeah, I, I, thought, it. I was yeah. like, I saw that. I was like, oh, that was hot. Round yeah. table. What was that so, uh, Red Bull? It was. Right? I think it was, yeah. Like during the during like the Red Bull, they had them all. They, like I didn't watch the whole thing. I couldn't. I was just like I was like eh. yeah. I was over it. <laughs> like I remember. Yeah. You can, like you can, I can count on like you know a hand yeah. how many. Like I know like black DJs who like yeah. were dope cutters. Like I remember uh -huh. fast forward. Uh, we're talking about uh, turntablism as it relates to uh, Black American diaspora mm -hmm. and, and how how uh, as far as like I was saying that maybe there's a lot. Percentage-wise, there's a lot more Black American jugglers than scratchers, and unless you know, West Coast scratching culture is way bigger than East yeah. Coast culture, so that plays a big dynamic too. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's just that, and it's like, and also too though, there was also a thing like um, with DJs and battling is uh, not as much as Black versus White, but like uh, with the attitude people uh, approach for battling, which I yeah. which I think I take a different one. Yeah, it's like, yeah. One thing I didn't, well, I didn't not like, I just uh, thought it was funny, yeah, yeah. was like, when I was battling the most, like, everyone was, well, even Craze started it, and then I emerged, yeah. everyone was trying to act like the toughest dude in the world, uh -huh. where it's like, in my mind, I'm like, uh -huh. you were in your fucking underwear and your socks in your bedroom, yeah. practicing, just like I was, yeah, yeah. and this is fun, yeah, like, yeah. you're having fun, right, uh -huh. so why are you up there... Acting tough looking so gangster. angry, and especially right. like yeah, acting tough and gangster, especially when like like the allies were acting tough, right? They're like we're the allies, we're yeah. tough, right? They were kind of acting tough. They were acting tough. That was their thing, which I thought was funny, because it's like you, I mean, you, you, you know, with the tape scratching, like uh -huh. you, I know what you did to get here. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. where you were. Yeah, right? yeah, and yeah. like, and even like uh, growing up in Milwaukee, I'd go to like b-boy battles yeah, yeah, where it's yeah. like these guys uh -huh. literally got in fights. Mm -hmm. Like we would go to Chicago and stuff, and people were literally like, you could, it wasn't like. People weren't, they were, they were acting tough, but they also, they weren't acting tough, because, like, exactly. we literally were, like, shit would happen in b-boy battles. People were, like, it's a lot more aggressive than you, pl uh, you playing with thousands of dollars worth of DJ yeah, equipment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you saved exactly. up money. Or, or, or graffiti writers that, like, oh, yeah. do felonies it's for, illegal. for riding on a train, like, and do, like, ten years. Like, yeah, that's, that's, people who fucking that's fall cool. off things and die, graffiti writers. It's right, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. no, you saved up for this shit, this yeah. equipment, you're it's having fun. those crazy things? Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's a whole nother thing. So that whole attitude when people would battle, like, I'd be like, oh, this is really funny. It's like, this is like, you're not really gonna do anything. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna pack up your needles and take off your records as soon as you're done, just like the rest of us. You're so tough, and then you're up. Oh, let me just get these needles here. Exactly, Let's go exactly. pack up my records and walk away. That's what's cool, I think, about DJ Academics getting getting so big now. You've seen DJ Academics, his, his YouTube stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He always yeah, tells yeah. news and he talks real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because back in the day, within hip hop, I feel like it was like before Drake era, people would be like, oh, you know, if you talk with the you know standard English accent and and you're not you know talking with strong ebonics, then you're not as, as you're not as hip hop or something like that, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I was just talking uh, in the last episode. We were talking about how you know turntables was kind of a niche genre, and it could be like golf in the future. And just to say that mm -hmm. we're not making golf money in the future, and a lot of people feel that like, oh, DJing has to be street oriented and things like that. And obviously, it's street oriented, but it's you know, Grandmaster Flash, all these people are intellectuals. It's like you know, they may have to deal with people in the street to make money, but they were all artists. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you know, uh, we were talking about ways of getting uh, turntables getting paid more. In the future, because I think that yeah. once we get paid more, I think that a lot more uh, black DJs will start to come back into turntablism if we can raise the amount of money in the battles. Yeah, I think that's what, what a lot of it comes down to. Yeah, they they, they, need, they should raise their own money, and I don't even know I, if it just died down over the years. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I remember prizes and shit used to be. Mm -hmm. This I guess my my main things my main things with battle uh, my main I mean I will still I'll never not battle even yeah. then, but like. Well, I remember being in battles in Madison, Wisconsin, and we were like second place. Yeah, I got me, I got a PDX in an 05. Exactly. You know, yeah. like first place. You yeah, got a smaller battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a small battle. Sometimes, yeah. Exactly. Sometimes the car wash battles and car yeah, wash like battles. Yeah, like the DJ Expo all these car battles. battles. They're like, hey, here's a thousand bucks. Here's 500 bucks. They're giving people money, and all these big battles that were sponsored by all these big people aren't giving anybody anything. I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, like, like even like, what is it like? Yeah, then. Like, I think, what is it, even, like, I think some of the DMTs, like, Rain themselves isn't even, 
aren't even giving out ring products. Exactly. Like, yeah. they're giving out, like, new mark fucking controllers yeah, yeah. for prizes. Yeah, somebody that's got some warehouse, you know, it's like, like we don't cost them, yeah. like, $50, you know? So like, yeah. They're making these things, like, $75 each. I don't know how much these things cost, but I'm sure the mixer, Yeah. Know, I'm sure it only costs, like, 100 bucks. I'm sure it does. Yeah, it's like... More than 100 bucks. Like, yeah. all the parts in Southeast Asia, or, you know, they get a lot of stuff in Ch- yeah, Taiwan. Yeah, factory and, costs. And, you know, um, it's very cheap to make those things I'm sure because yeah people, and, and uh, but the cool thing is with the DIY stuff now people are starting to make it themselves and we talked about that in past episodes mm-hmm. so we could also talk about that now what you think about the future of turntablism uh, because um, with all these 3D printed stuff you know and the there's little portable mixers and faders it seems like like with skateboarders, we'll be able to have our own printed little faders and stuff. That everything, the price is gonna drop. Yeah, you know, we would have mixers that are like, oh, it's a dope mixer. Maybe it's you know twenty five dollars or something. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think I think like <coughs> yeah, DIY stuff. It's 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 building on the community. I think the port like the the portable has seen mm-hmm. changed everything. Yeah, yeah. Because like now it's even like I'll teach kids DJing and stuff sometimes too. Like do this uh. Yeah, like with this home girl who runs like yeah. this thing called Baby DJ School. Oh yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, Natalie. Natalie, yeah, yeah. That's great. I gotta have Natalie come through. That's Shout great. out to Natalie. Yeah, yeah I teach. Yeah. Yeah, I teach oh, that's right. You know Natalie. That's yeah, great. I teach kids uh-huh. something. I want to do some of their parties, but it's like I can tell people now. It's uh-huh. like if people see me scratching with a portable or something. If people saw me scratching before when I was out, they'd be like, "Oh, how can I start DJing?" I'm like, "Well, this turntable is five hundred dollars. That turntable is yeah, five hundred dollars. Exactly. This is down down." And I was like. Well, for $130, if you just want to scratch, exactly. you can scratch. It's like, and that's actually made, made me like tighten up even more my scratching. Because, like, I mean, I guess the goal is, oh, that was, the goal mm-hmm. is even like from hanging out with B Boys. We were just talking about uh, portableism and how portableism, uh, how having the portable turntables is kind of, um, I think just talking about how uh, the, the portable turntables uh, are bringing. Uh, DJing um, outdoors like the other hip hop artists like yeah, you can, and, you can and, break uh, anywhere, you can just break anywhere. anywhere. You know, you can do it outside, be girls. Yeah, and uh, then people, yeah, people who want to get started now, it's just like, oh yeah, you just get your, get your part right, you'll get scratching. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Let's see how we're doing time. Uh, let's see, so we can record like a half an hour maybe. So yeah, we'll do like maybe 10 more minutes. Um, yeah, so, so basically, yeah, uh, so as far as uh, where you see yourself going as an artist, uh, the, the juggling and scratching, uh, what do you see f- for the future? Like, do you see yourself uh, hmm. going more scratching? Do you see yourself staying kind of like equal in the middle? I mean, I feel I feel I'm, I've been focusing a, uh, a lot more on scratching yeah. lately too. The, uh, I think that's also like a a technical thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, because like, scr- like scratching is always going to be scratching. Mm-hmm. I feel the the techn- the, uh, the the advances in technology mm-hmm. may have bastardized juggling. Mm-hmm. A oh little yeah, bit. yeah, you just like, oh, yeah, because make it sound like yeah, that. yeah. You can you, you're hitting cue points. You're uh, you're not your touch doesn't matter. You're not gonna exactly. skip. Yeah, because back in the day, it was like it was like like you're good just because you could not make not yeah, skip. yeah. Your record's like, not gonna skip. You did all that and it didn't skip. You don't have to yeah. transition <laughs> to a record. It don't, you don't have to... And then pre-make it for yourself. Like, oh, it's it. all yeah. pre-made. And I'm just like, da 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 I know I can just go like that. Yeah, you're going to clock it. It's all going to be on beat. You don't have to find records that like will blend. You don't have to mix between records. So it's bastardized. Right? That's like, you're hit. I'm not saying you're only hitting cue points, but it makes it... It's yeah, really more, yeah, it's, it's like a piano it. versus somebody in a synthesizer. Synthesizer is totally different. Than the yeah, you know, they have two different sounds. Like, it's, like, yeah, it's like... But scratching, you have to scratch. Like right. that's it. Like you're not exactly, gonna yeah. like you're scratching. That's what it is. It's like. Mm-hmm. But also, I feel with scratching. I feel like the audience for it. I feel like there's a bigger scratching audience since more people can scratch. Because because mm-hmm. Rob Swift was saying something interesting about the fact that you know, like if you're juggling, if you if you're off, it's easy to see that you're off. Mm-hmm. But with scratching, somebody could be brand new and like even after three months, like even if you're not great, they, yeah. just, they can still like get in a cipher and be like, oh, I'm, look at this one fast uh, cut. I have yeah, I can like kind of stay on beat or oh look, I'm being abstract. You know, you can get away with being abstract. Yeah. Over a beat with because like if you're juggling, you're trying to be abstract or something. They go, oh, you're off. Your 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 beat's not off. You know. Yeah. I mean, your beat's off, and people can see that. Yeah. It's similar to like if somebody's painting and they just. You know, they start off abstract, you know, it's, it's easy to get away with that now. Yeah. Abstraction is, is cool. So, like, with scratching, I can see what Rob Swift is saying right. uh, that, you know, somebody can, you know, like a couple of months, somebody could be like, oh, look, I'm scratching. Look, look, I'm scratching. Well, that's not bad, though. And that yeah, makes yeah, it yeah. a bigger audience. 
then it's like, oh, how long does it take to learn a triple three D versus how long does it take to, you know, just get some basic yeah. uh, scratch stuff down. I think that people can, sc scratching has a uh, lower entry level, like as far as difficult, sure, sure, as far sure. As difficulty yeah. probably. So I think that is part of the portable thing of why it's blowing up so fast and yeah. creating an audience. And I feel like now since we're, for me, like, I gave up on clubs. I'm just like, hey, I'm straight to YouTube. Yeah. So I'm so for me, scratching is like, oh, I can just scratch all day. Where it's like juggling, you got to think about a routine, and, and yeah, you know, it's like a lot of times people aren't really freestyling juggling for three hours. You know, maybe they are, but usually they're practicing for a specific, they're like trying to cut something up. Yes, editing. Way. Yeah, I feel like juggling yeah. is more editing. Exactly. Yeah, unless freeform, it's like you know, I'll make a, I'll practice a juggle. I'll have a bunch of different patterns, and then it's like, and also like juggling. Is people are pretty much juggling for battles. Exactly, yeah. Like, so people like, aren't watching it that much. Yeah, I mean, so people are watching old school battle juggles. But yeah, but it's like not just yeah. Like I never see people forwarding. I see a lot of videos being forwarded, and everybody now, everybody's just forwarding people in their own studio scratching most of the time. Not, yeah, not necessarily. I mean, juggling. Yeah, battles, because like, you know? like now, you, now you even said, I like juggling is for battles. It's like yeah. you're not juggling on someone's record. You're not. You don't hear a commercial. Exactly. Uh, like someone who never produces whatever yeah. fucking uh, what's it called like. Yeah, like a Nicki Minaj song, they used the Baby Got Back, you know, that's the last time I heard scratching in the pop radio uh, was when they, you know, when they redid Baby Got Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it has, like, the scratching in it, you know, from the original, you know. And yeah. They left it in it, which was cool. I was like, wow, scratching on the radio again. Kids are going to be able to, to, to hear it, because nobody has scratching to the Nobody really does. There's actually, there's a funny, uh, I've heard an interview with A-Track uh -huh. talking about uh -huh. how he, like, how he, like, not accidentally, but just, like, he kind of, like, forced... Uh, his scratching onto a uh, gold digger ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with Kanye West because I uh, guess he was there's a story because he was Kanye West tour date yeah I remember that time, yeah, yeah, and he, he was like one, yeah. he was like oh I got this idea I want to hear in the studio he's like and I never really got a chance to hear it in the studio but like he just did it while they were doing a live show one yeah, day yeah, like yeah. get get uh -huh. get get that get that uh, and then Kanye's like yeah let's do it let's put, let's put that in the, exactly. uh, in the record but like yeah it's not that much but you, you're definitely not going to hear Chuck like, yeah. you know, not... Do you think scratching can ever go pop like how Rocket did? Like where it's like, trip, trip, oh, and, like there's some melody and people know that melody and they're like, oh, I love that. Because with that, you know, Herbie Hancock, they won a Grammy. They won. A, oh yeah, they, 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 they won. won a best. They, they beat Michael Jackson that year. They beat. It was in the R and B category. It wasn't even like instrumental Shit, or instrumental or something. It was like it, it was it was like R and B instrumental or something category. I mean, <laughs> maybe. I mean, they beat out like. Maybe out a lot of people like the Gap Band, maybe. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it's there. It's probably yeah. it's, it's, this. I don't know how big it'll get that big, but like, or people even know that. I don't think it'll get that much credit. Yeah. Like that. I, I think it's gonna eventually. Cause I think that like with the wobble stuff and the 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 uh, you know um, and the EDM and the dub stuff mm -hmm. that came before it. I feel like a lot of that came out of the turntables and wobble kind of craze kind of stuff, and mm -hmm. everybody the turntables were kind of embracing wobble before, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, before a lot of people. And I feel like when people are making all these melodies, like a lot of the wobbles got played out, like like oh the whoa, 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 or the whoa, 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 you know, mm -hmm. like, just so everybody's surfing through that new melody. What's that new wobble or that new thing? And yeah. scratching is a lot of the future melodies because they haven't been. There's no hits with them. There are some, but not a lot, you know. So I feel like, uh, like you know, that um, Prince Paul kind of stuff, you know, where he was just kind of like transforming a, mm -hmm. a, a melody. I think that might be big in the future where somebody's just, you know, because that's kind of yeah. some rave stuff, even some techno stuff is kind of like a strobed uh, melody or something or a strobed yeah. bass line. But just hearing the transform, like, you know, that the deal is so like, what's that, me, myself, and I, you know, where it's like, the, it's like, duh, 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 duh. Oh, not the, oh, no, that's the he's, 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 uh, yeah, a lot of those, they lost oh, yeah, them. Yeah, he's scratching through all those albums, and those, that was, like, probably the closest to a pop hit, you know, for, like, that, that De La one, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that could kind of go swing, you know. But it seems like, because the, the producers, like, you know, everybody's doing the, like, oh. And so, yeah, I guess we could talk about, uh, I think we were talking about, um, the uh, portable stuff, and we were just talking about scratching in general. Uh, I feel like uh, the people that are scratching versus jugglers, uh, like for me, I know people that are dope jugglers, but I feel like juggling's kind of climaxed in a sense, uh, and that's kind of a controversial thing to say, yeah. but I'm talking about as far as like the, the style of te techniques for me, like I feel like the late 90s, like 2000 by, by Kintaro, by that time I feel like 
there hasn't really been that many new styles to, that people are doing. It's like, oh, okay, are you doing students' patterns like Cats were doing in 99? Or yeah. are you doing, you know, can you do them super fast? You know, but I feel like, you know, the scratching, the new patterns are coming out. But with the juggling, there's not a lot of new patterns coming out, you know? It's not that many patterns, you know? It's like. Yeah, it's like, I feel like I like people's selection and how they put mm -hmm. it like that's what i yeah. look for more uh -huh. and joking and how they put it together and then like uh -huh. i said it's with the whole i guess they think this is yeah. new patterns but uh -huh. like since they have buttons yeah, yeah. that they can yeah. trigger uh -huh. and like effects they can do uh, like i think they i guess they think that's the next level of juggling yeah exactly I, it's like oh i'm adding some melodies in there which is cool it's like doo, 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 yeah yeah like doo, 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 doo. like tone and, and that, that. that's cool like you know um that's uh, i think that's you know the use adding the technology into the juggling which uh it, it is definitely cool but i feel like you know maybe in the future you know if you look at juggling as just a type of scratch mm. you know scratching my uh you know be way more uh, kind of like the ramps thing, you know, like verts, like skateboarding. In the beginning mm. it was all about the ramps, but then that whole ramp thing collapsed, and nobody really cared anymore. Then it went into the, all the street skating, and, yeah, the, yeah, and the street yeah. skaters kind of and scratch, the scratching kind of seems more like the street skating, where it's more accessible. People can do it at home. Like, hey, I, yeah, you I got a street, I can scratch. I mean, I can skateboard. Where it's like, hey, I, I, I can scratch. You know, I don't. I'm not. You know, trying to win a battle. I'm not battling like people that aren't even trying to battle. It's like. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to? Because sometimes it's like, hey, if you're doing turntablism, you have to be trying to practice the battle. But what if you're not even trying to battle? You're trying to have fun with your friends, your homies come through, everybody scratching.